All right, now we're going to talk about some smart filters. Um, let's zoom in a little bit. And if we wanted to do any retouching, we could. There's nothing physically wrong with my dog. He's absolute perfection. So I'll just pretend um, by making a new layer and calling it retouching. Right? And then if you're, funnily enough, actually, everything looks pretty clean. So we'll just, you know, pretend we'll get rid of some of this dirt and grab the healing brush, say, spot healing brush and get rid of a little bit of that. And that's working because we have sample all layers. So sometimes you'll need to do some retouching and you always want to do that on a blank layer. And if you try and do it on the smart object, it'll tell you you can't anyway, which is kind of a nice reminder. All right. Okay, so we want this to be black and white. In this case, I'm gonna just make a black and white adjustment layer and grab the targeted adjustment tool. And I'm gonna work around. I, what, I, what I want is his face to not get, you see how his face loses the difference in, in uh, values? I want that to be lighter. He's a two-tone dog. Okay, now I'm also going to make a curves layer, grab the targeted adjustment tool, bring his ears down a little bit, and bring that white of his chest up a little bit. So he starts to look pretty handsome, right? Gives it a little bit more uh, contrast, maybe a little much. I can always take that down, okay? Um, if I want to just make sure that the chest is not going too white. One of the things I could do is make another curves layer and just focus on the chest to make sure there's enough value in it. And now I don't want it affecting everything else. So I can hit Command I to invert, grab the brush, and then paint that back, oops, sorry, with white in the front, paint that retouch in. So you can see now I have his chest is on this layer because I thought it was a little too bright on that layer and everything else is on this layer. And this is another way using the curves as localized adjustments is another way to work with black and white and make sure that you have separation for your luminosity values. And I've got kind of a big old brush. So let's turn that back on and hit X and clean that up a little bit. Okay, but now I definitely have a little more detail there and I like that. So I'm all ready to print and I'm going to add a uh, filter. Well, I can't add a filter to any of these. I need to make a stamp visible at the very top. Name this stamp visible. What that does is takes all the information from all your visible layers and puts it on to one layer. I'm gonna to go to filter and convert it for smart filters. What that does is gives you an icon that you'll probably recognize. This one right here. So now smart filters are the best and I'll show you why. So if you're starting a new program, this is probably how you use filters. Oh man, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put um, a motion blur on this, yeah. And it's gonna look like, yeah, that's awesome. And then you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna oil paint it. Yeah. And then you know what else I'm gonna do? Like this is because when you get a new thing, you have to kind of try everything. It doesn't mean it's right, okay? That's not right. But if you did that on a normal layer, a non-smart filter layer, what would happen is you wouldn't be able to turn them off. So that's why a smart filter is kind of cool. So if you're at home and you're like, okay, I will put a sharpen unsharp mask on and I'm going to grab his little, little nose. What is happening? Oh my God. The radius is a thousand and the threshold's 200. That's a lot. Um, I'm going to take this up. And if you hold the mouse down in here, let's make, I'm gonna make it a little more aggressive because I want you to see. If you hold the mouse down, you can see the before and then the after. So you don't wanna go crazy. Just, I keep the radius around one. 
the threshold yeah under five and this between maybe 80 to 90. Um, you can also go back in and add a little clarity while you're on camera raw that's something I like to add too but now you have an unsharp mask that is just bringing a little more sharpness the appearance of sharpness to it. This doesn't work on out of focus images. Okay, you can't bring an out of focused image into focus. What an, uh, what an unsharp mask does is because uh, this file is made up of pixels and all the pixels are the same size, digital images tend to look soft, much softer than film, right, which has variable grain. So this has pixels, which are all the same. So Adding that unsharp mask gives the appearance of it being a little sharper, okay? It's also different from clarity because this is affecting every one of the pixels and clarity is just affecting the midtones. So at any point, I could just double click, go back in here, give a little more clarity and hit okay and we're, and we're good, all right? Now, I'm gonna throw all of these away by just dragging them to the trash. You can do a lot with smart filters. You can stack them and change the opacity and change the blending mode. But what I want to show you is, say I, say I did want to do something crazy like a tilt shift. Okay, so I wanted to do something a little crazy like that. And I hit Okay, but I only like part of it. You can edit this because this is what? A layer mask. It's a mask. It's awesome. Get your brush, go in there and edit out parts that you like, or you'd maybe like that out of focus on his ear, but who want, you know, you definitely want his eye. If you want a little less, you can change the opacity of the brush by hitting one through 10 on your numerical pad. And then you can bring a little bit of that blur back. Okay. Sorry. There we go. So I'm bringing a little bit of it back. That is why smart filters are so awesome is because you can use them as localized filters. You might need something if you ever want to mimic a depth of field, you could throw the background on focus and then have, you know, go, go and add a Gaussian blur and then paint out what you want to be in more focus. Or if there's something in the background that's not your favorite thing in the world, this is a great way to do it. Okay. Um, you can turn it on and you can turn it off. Cool? So that's why I do a stamp visible to add all my filters on at the end.